The AK-47 is one of the most recognizable weapons in the entire world, but more importantly in the video game CS2. From one taps to spray transfers and everything in between, today we will cover everything you need to know to master the best rifle in the game. Welcome back to Full Force Guides. Without further ado, let's get into the video. When everyone first starts playing CS, their first instinct is to hold down the trigger and not let go until either you or your enemy has been deleted from the server. This can be good, but only if you actually know what you're doing. Spraying is usually the best choice in close to medium range fights, and every single weapon in CS has its own consistent spray pattern, and the AK is no different. With no counter movements, the AK's spray pattern goes straight up, then one or two bullets jump to the left, and that's the first 8 to 10 bullets. After that, it gets harder to control. It goes hard right, then hard left, and back to the right. As for spray control, all you have to do is the opposite of the spray pattern. So for the AK, it's straight down, then hard left, hard right, and back to the left. Mastering spray control is one of the hardest things to learn in the entire game, because you not only need to have the spread memorized, you need to be able to hit moving targets and flick between players while still maintaining maintaining perfect accuracy. But it can't be that hard, right? <laughs> If you want the easy way out and don't feel like learning the entire spray, you can always just pull down for the first 8 bullets and reset your spray from there. But that's enough of that. Next we're going to talk about bursting. Bursting is probably the most common way to fire the AK. Bursting is just shooting 3-5 to five bullets at a time and then letting your spread reset before shooting again. Bursting is good in every single scenario because you can maintain insanely high accuracy while still getting multiple shots off, so mastering bursting is a must. While you're bursting, you also have an advantage of moving between each burst, making yourself harder to hit while still maintaining the same kill potential. Lastly with bursting, don't forget that if you're shooting a burst in that 4-5 to five bullet range, you will have to pull down slightly to compensate for the spread. Now tapping is the third and final shooting style and is the most aim centric way to shoot the AK. Tap firing is simply shooting one bullet at a time and is similar to bursting in the sense that you have to learn the timing between every shot. The advantage of tapping is the near perfect accuracy making it the preferred method of shooting at a long range. The biggest tip I can give for tapping is just to stay calm with each shot. Long range fights aren't usually about who shoots first, it's about who is more precise with the shots they take. Of course, every shooting style will take tons of time to perfect, but those are the three you need to know and when to use them. Now you pick up the good old AK ready to try out your new shooting styles, but first it's probably good to know how many bullets you'll actually need to get a kill. So no matter if the enemy has armor or not, if you shoot someone in the leg it'll do 26 damage per bullet, taking 4 shots to get a kill. But I hope you're not aiming for legs in the first place. In the stomach, you will do 44 damage without armor and 34 with. In the chest, you will do 35 with armor and 27 without armor. Finally, what we're all aiming for in the first place, headshots will deal a whopping 143 damage without armor and 111 with armor, meaning that no matter what, if you hit someone in the head, you will be getting a kill. And of course, we're excluding wall banks from that, but we'll get to that. Now next, we're going to talk about something you might not have thought of. Unless there's a suppressor on the gun, you will have bullet tracers flying through the air every single time you click. And if you look at the AK, it definitely does not have a suppressor. What I'm getting at for this is spamming smokes. With the new smokes in CS2, spamming smokes is becoming more effective than ever, but weapons that don't have suppressors, you have to be careful. Good players will be able to use your bullet tracers to figure out your location and shoot back, shutting you down entirely. My biggest tip to combat this is if you want to spam a smoke, make sure to move around a bit between shots. This will make it hard for anyone spamming back to have accurate shots on you. But don't forget, if you're confident you're hitting someone, don't be afraid to commit to a spray through the smoke. A lot of the time, people stop shooting shooting before they get the kill, even if they're actually hitting someone. On top of bullet tracers, the next thing you need to know before mastering the AK is how wall bangs work. Understanding this will teach you how to trust your gun in every single situation. Every weapon also has its own penetration power. This decides how much damage each gun will do through walls or if it can even shoot through certain walls in the first place. Weapons such as submachine guns, shotguns, and pistols have a low pen power at around 100. Most machine guns and rifles, including the AK, have a penetration power level of 200. This is right between low and high wall bank levels, so you can trust the AK to shoot through most walls, but be aware that especially thicker walls will heavily decrease the damage of every single bullet. Also, if you were wondering, the snipers have the highest power level at 300. And while we're still on the topic of ammo, we're going to talk a little bit about the AK's ammo. The AK has 90 reserve bullets and 30 rounds in the magazine, which is actually pretty high and very helpful when using a rifle, especially for a weapon like an AK, where you can find a kill with only a single shot. 
When comparing this to one of the CT rifles, the M4A1S has only 20 shots in the magazine, which is extremely noticeable especially if you're a player who likes to spray a lot. But at the end of the day, it's just one of the many luxuries of the AK. Now the next step to mastering the AK is fully understanding all the economy that has to do with buying this weapon, and how you can maximize the numbers of rounds that you can use it. The AK is only $2700, which is extremely cheap for a rifle of its status. Because of how cheap it is, most people try to buy it after winning pistol rounds, but this can actually be a fatal mistake. Getting a kill with any rifle grants you $300, so that's great. Let's say you win pistol, buy an AK, and get two kills. That'll get you 600 credits going into round three. But what most people don't know is that certain weapons grant you even more money. For example, submachine guns will give you 600 for a single kill. So if you end up winning pistol round and opt to buy an SMG, you can now make $1,200 from getting a double kill instead of the 600 you made before. And you don't really have to worry about it being less lethal since enemies won't likely have armor. Overall, it really is is just a smarter decision, and it can really open up the economy for your team moving forward. Another reason this is important is if you somehow end up losing second round and you buy an AK, now the enemy team has your weapon in their hands, significantly boosting their economy, all while ruining your own. Now if you're at all skeptical of how good the AK really is, let's compare it to some other rifles. These two rifles are known more as force weapons than viable weapon buys. Of course we're talking about the Galil and the FAMAS. These weapons are only good if you need to force up with your squad, but don't don't have enough funds to afford one of the better rifles. The FAMAS does 21 and 26 damage to armored targets in the body, meaning that it's 4 or 5 body shots to get a kill, as well as 84 damage to the head, taking at least 2 shots to finish someone off. The Galil is slightly stronger, with 23 and 29 damage to the body, as well as 92 to the head again. So yeah, 4 to 5 body shots and at least 2 bullets if you get a headshot before you can finish the kill. But those are just the cheap rifles, surely the other ones can compete with the AK. The M4A1S does 26 and 33 damage to the body, and again, 92 damage to the head, meaning you can body shot with 4 bullets but you still need at least 2 bullets before you can get a kill with a headshot. And lastly, the M4A4, which is probably the most similar to the AK and it has 30 rounds in the magazine, but still the damage does not compete. The M4A4 does 23 and 28 damage to the body, and for the 4th time, 92 damage to the head. So yeah, 4 to 5 body shots and at least 2 bullets to get a kill if you hit them in the head. But then we have the AK with 27 damage to the upper chest and 34 damage to the stomach. It makes the AK the only rifle that can 3 bullet body shot if you hit them in the stomach. And of course we talked about it earlier, but what everyone loves the AK for, 111 damage in the head makes it the only rifle that can one shot headshot armored targets. So yeah, in conclusion, the AK is, and always will be, the best rifle in the game. Now really quickly we'll run through all the movement information you need to know for the AK. The Galil and the AK share a movement speed of 215 units per second, which is pretty average but very slightly slower than the other rifles. Moving and shooting with any rifle, but especially the AK, is not and will never be an accurate strategy. If you want to be able to accurately use any of the shooting styles you learned about earlier, you must master counter strafing. When you let go of a key, there is a slight moment when you're still moving before you come to a complete stop. In that slight moment, if you try to shoot, you will be inaccurate. To counteract this, we use counter strafing. You simply hit the opposite directional key right as you let go of the first key. Every gun also has a certain amount of first bullet inaccuracy, meaning that some of the time, even if you are perfectly on the enemy's head, your shot could still miss. The only way to make first shot inaccuracy better is by crouching. So if you're ever holding an angle and are extremely confident, consider crouching to give yourself an even better chance at hitting the shot. Lastly, we'll run through all the ways you can practice to really master everything we talked about in this video. If you're just starting out, load into a deathmatch again against bots and start off by just shooting at a wall. Learn the bullet spread and try to practice your spray control. Then you can run around spraying down some bots. After you practice your spray control, go ahead and do the same thing with tap and burst firing. Learn the timing by shooting at a wall and don't stop until you can consistently be accurate. Once you're comfortable, you can run around and practice these styles on AI. As soon as you're ready, you can jump into a real deathmatch and learn how it will all feel to shoot against real players. At the end of the day, the best practice will always be the repetitions in real matches. But hey, thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. We're going to be grinding out videos here on Full Force, so if you're looking to become the best CS2 player possible, make sure to smash that like and subscribe. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.